and uh, good afternoon everybody uh, and a very warm welcome to everyone present on call i do hope all of you and your near and dear ones are in the best of health and safe uh, it's a, in fact indeed uh, you know very heartening to note that the country has started you know showing some really good progress with regard to this unforeseen pandemic i mean we are seeing the numbers go down the mortality is going down the vaccination is going up the recovery is going up so all in all at least you know in a better frame of mind uh, i think all of us are today in the call so uh, so thanks thanks for uh, everybody for having taken precautions and hope we continue to do the same uh, joining me today we have uh, you know rishi our cfo and nilesh jain our company secretary uh, and of course our uh, ir advisor uh, sga they are also on the call with me so welcome to all i hope uh, all of you had the time to go through the financial results and the presentation uh, which outline our financial and operational performance uh, so uh, before we get into the numbers uh, i'll just give a brief backdrop of the economy and the industry the quarter uh, started the quarter started of course uh, october so typically the best month uh, happens in october when when diwali is in uh, november of course uh, so this is where it started uh, it started on a very positive note and the government initiated the unlock 5 5.0 as they call in october so a high recovery rate and india's good fortune of avoiding a second wave uh, meant that the economic recovery continued further india launched its mass vaccination program for uh, covid-19 of course that is uh, from january mid january this should further elevate the situation in the quarters to come the government continued its calibrated approach towards relief and stimulus measures to help indian economy uh, the government also approved uh, the pli scheme uh, you know performance link intensive incentive scheme uh, as you all must have uh, seen in the budget there was uh, allocation of 1.97 lakh crore Uh, towards this to boost the economy and the auto industry is of course going to be a major beneficiary of the same uh, as you must have seen our results as also the results of uh, you know everybody else in the auto sector in the oem space auto component space and in fact even in other uh, other areas uh, the v shaped recovery continues very strongly for all uh, in all segments on the back of uh, pent up demand and of course the festive season even the m and h cv segment which is the medium and heavy commercial vehicles started recovering fast with the economy and infrastructure recovering i mean this was a, a, a little bit of a laggard initially in the first two quarters but what we are seeing in terms of cv sales is you know month on month there has been a consistent improvement in the figures uh, they have uh, recovered almost to pre covid levels led by strong demand for icvs and tippers the strong demand during festive season appears to be sustaining uh, because you know after october typically uh, november is the diwali season and december is the last year of the last month of the year uh, where cyclically we have seen the sales are low but uh, you know we had among the best december we have seen ever uh, this was mainly you know based on uh, uh, a strong sentiment overall liquidity from rural and semi urban markets and rise in preference for personal mobility in urban uh, centers so this boards well as we are ramping up our operations in alignment with the customer demand the outlook for indian economy uh, again as you may have read several uh, reports ims rbi imf i mean uh, which ratings what have you you know all are indicating anything from you know 9% to 11% growth in uh, the fiscal year 22 which is again very good news uh, the union budget and rbi policies are also geared towards propelling underlying growth without giving into compulsion to short term stimulus so this budget was definitely a very i must say uh, a progressive budget keeping in mind uh, the good growth that the country can achieve and what it needs to enable that growth so on the whole uh, i mean we are all seeing of course the stock market giving a very strong thumbs up to the budget we expect the momentum sustain going forward on the back of robust rural demand with uh, you know a record kharif output better cash flows good reservoir levels in terms of water and an excellent rabi sowing so all this you know bodes well for our uh, you know mainstay which is agriculture and rural economy from which you know everybody stands to gain 
So while we are propelled into a V-shaped recovery, we continue to maintain all precautions across our operations with respect to COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, again, I'm really happy to share that we have reached a level of only two active cases as at the moment at Gabriel across all our plants in India. So that's only two active cases, and, and both of them are uh, doing well and should, I mean, should recover perfectly normally. So we, we continue not to let our guards down. Uh, we continue to follow all the precautions, uh, right from masking, distancing, hand washing, you know, using sanitizers, uh, so on and so forth, because uh, we are very clear that, uh, you know, uh, it, it's still not behind us. Uh, now moving on to the numbers, I'm happy to inform, uh, to report a strong improvement uh, in our performance in Q3, uh, FY21. Revenue growth of 18% uh, year on year and 17% quarter on quarter. Uh, revenue of 536 crores on the back of improved customer sentiments uh, and demand drivers as I had mentioned earlier. This is in fact the highest quarterly revenue we have clocked in the nine, last nine quarters since Q2 of FY19. We have recorded 22% growth in EBITDA in Q3 uh, 21 uh, of about uh, rupees 39 crores. Margins expanded by 20 basis points to 7.3%. There has been a in significant increase in commodity prices, which again, uh, most of you must have, uh, I mean, are surely aware of, particularly in steel, where, uh, you know, the industry is seeing actually almost obscene price increases uh, demanded by the steel, steel mills. However, with better operational leverage and strong results of, you know, our core 90, which I had shared in the last two calls, core 90 is standing for cost reduction 90 days, uh, which is a cost reduction drive across Gabriel. Uh, due to the strong results of this and productivity, productivity improvement programs executed throughout the pandemic, uh, we were able to offset part of the increase. PAT uh, came in at 25 crores, up 40% year on year. Moving on to the balance sheet and cash flows, we continue to maintain a robust balance sheet position with a net cash of 283 crores. We have maintained our trust on collections and continuously working on reducing our inventories. And mind you, we have uh, at no point, you know, uh, uh, I mean, put our tier two suppliers at any inconvenience, uh, even during the, the peak of pandemic. I mean, our payments have been on dot all along, and that's a that's the philosophy we follow in Gabriel as well as Anand Group. Uh, and, and as you are aware, we, we incidentally also are very well known and well regarded for this aspect of ours in terms of supporting tier two vendors. So the cash flow generation uh, was to the tune of 204 crores for the nine months compared to 110 crores in FY29 months. So coming to the segment wise performance, we continue to see solid traction in two wheeler segment with 20% growth year on year, led by efforts in terms of enhancing market share with key customers, greater efforts in terms of creating new products, and on account of strong recognition of end products in the market. Uh, so here, uh, I mean, uh, I'm glad to share that while of course we keep uh, winning new programs with our existing customers, uh, you know, uh, TVS, uh, Yamaha, Suzuki, uh, that of course are, uh, uh, I mean, we are uh, well on track for that. But uh, we have also won the LOI from Ola Electric for their, you know, electric two-wheeler, which is, uh, again, uh, you must have read about Ola Electric's plans of, uh, you know, making two million vehicles in, in, a, in a place down south, uh, you know, uh, somewhere in, uh, near, near Chennai, in between Chennai and Hosur, actually. So we have, we have won that LOI uh, for both the front fork as well as the shock absorber. I'm glad to report a year on year as well as a sequential uptick in our PC segment, uh, which is the passenger car segment. As you're aware, our performance was impacted in the last few years due to discontinuation of some of the models that we were on, particularly Maruti, due to the norms changing and Maruti not going ahead with those models like, uh, you know, the Maruti Omni. Uh, but we have been working hard uh, and I've been sharing that again on several uh, of my calls, the previous calls on, on building a very robust pipeline. Uh, glad to share that that is bearing fusion. Uh, Espresso, uh, of course, is with us in terms of Maruti. We are also present on the new Alto, and we are, uh, you know, working on the new platform, uh, uh, Maruti Jimny, uh, which you are aware, uh, which is in 
advanced stages of discussion plus in addition one more platform which is again in an advanced stage of discussion so uh, you know some good uh, pipeline here we are also on a new platform Volkswagen we are uh, uh, also one uh, uh, one uh, program as a second source of course in Tata Motors uh, where we had we had uh, not done business for some time so we are back into Tata Motors uh, we, the initial supplies are starting this month uh, we've also won the Peugeot Citro, which of course the plants have got deferred, but we are there 100% on the Peugeot Citro as well. Uh, in coming to commercial vehicle, where we are the market leader, uh, the good news is the sales uh, have picked up. The MNHCV is really uh, picking up month on month, and there's a really robust demand from all the customers. Uh, we we are on the you know Ashok Leyland's Bada Door, which they launched during the COVID time. Uh, we are 100 percent source of that as well aftermarket uh, continues to be a strong story we have achieved we have generated revenue to the tune of almost 70 crores in q3 which is 18 percent up year on year compared to the last uh, comparable quarter we are uh, successfully leveraging brand gabriel by launching new product lines as i had shared last time we launched the brake pads uh, which is a very fast moving item and uh, the response has been good on, on that new product. And we are continuously focusing on uh, increasing our you know, uh, penetration in B and C class towns and also the exports. Yes, exports aftermarket also, while on a small base, but it's showing good improvement. Exports in terms of uh, you know, overall exports, they continue to uh, show a good uh, exports continue to show a good traction. Uh, based on some, uh, you know, again, some programs which we have been working for over the last two years. Now the supplies have started. We did share last in the last call. So Volkswagen Russia, we are send, sending one container per week. Uh, this has been happening for last uh, two months now. Uh, DAF of Netherlands, we there also we have started regular supplies. Uh, uh, and uh, that's only one, one part. We are working on two other products of DAF which will start uh, in this in the coming fiscal so you know exports have started picking up uh, for us definitely in terms of in in oe space uh, so this led, led to a robust revenue growth of 140 percent year on year and 74 percent q1 q2 22 crore of exports in q3 fy21 uh, as uh, shared all oems are now focusing on the china plus one strategy uh, so they are looking at uh, how to de-risk uh, the strategy and develop some other source other than you know from the Chinese uh, territory uh, so uh, we we hope to leverage on this uh, and win some more uh, some more orders let's say in, in the next year or two to conclude uh, post the initial disruption due to COVID-19 we have seen a strong v-shape recovery uh, we remain uh, cautiously optimistic optimistic about the sustainability of the demand. We are striving towards becoming a global top, top five player, which is our vision. We have a four-pronged approach to achieve this vision. Exports is a key part of this. And yes, we are seeing some traction as, as I just mentioned. Further, we'll look at domestic dominance in the sectors uh, where we are operating. Uh, commercial vehicle, definitely we are the leader. And in two wheelers, we are uh, uh, you know, improving our market share uh, continuously. Uh, in passenger car, where we had uh, lost out initially, but now, uh, as mentioned, the pipeline is really good and strong. And the fourth, uh, and then of course, our uh, pursuit of inorganic growth opportunities continue. Uh, uh, we are actively scanning, and we will, of course, make the decision. And uh, the choice based on, you know, of course, uh, uh, the best, best possible uh, option. Uh, lastly, uh, the fourth important enabler is quality and technology. Uh, you know, we are uh, we are India's pioneer in this field, and uh, we have probably the best uh, research and development team that is there in India. I mean, definitely uh, with regard to that, in terms of technology. And I'm glad to share that our tech center for four wheelers is almost complete, and we we should uh, you know formally inaugurate it sometime in the month of March. Uh, the building is complete, the machines have been moved, and uh, in fact, the offices are undergoing the uh, final touches. 
So this should definitely, you know, give us some good, uh, give our engineers also a good encouragement and space to experiment and keep coming up with new products and new technologies. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, of course, our our push, our own uh, little push in terms of being Atmanirbhar has, uh, has, you know, being promoted by uh, our Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, with regard to uh, the overall quarter that we have seen. Again, uh, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, the quarter going forward, uh, I mean, I'm keen to listen to your your questions, uh, your queries, and I'll be glad to clarify any of those. Uh, and on that note, I'll come to the end of my remarks, and I would now hand over uh, to the moderator to start the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Our recipients are requested to use handsets while asking our question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Arun Akarwal from Code of Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, so, congrats on good uh, top line growth uh, and uh, relatively decent uh, uh, performance uh, on the pad front. Uh, so, my first question is on the on your margins. Uh, so, we understand, you know, that uh, uh, we have seen some commodity price increases. Uh, so, we do have a pass through clause with the customers, right? So, when do you think we'll be able to pass through these cost increases, or do we'll have to absorb some portion of that? Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, thanks for your compliments and uh, observations. Uh, so, yeah, we have a pass through clause. Uh, uh, like I mentioned, pass through is for I mean almost 80, 85 percent of our total uh, part because everything is not exactly pass through. And like I mentioned, some are you know quarterly, some are six monthly, and we also have the odd one which is even yearly. Uh, so to that extent, uh, in in an increasing market, in an increasing commodity market which we are currently seeing. Uh, so we are settling currently now uh, from October, uh, so October 2020 onwards. So that is being settled. Uh, so there will be some lag, uh, yes, for sure, uh, where we do not have the quarterly settlement. Uh, I, I don't think there will be a loss. Uh, it is only, uh, if at all, there will be some cash loss. Yeah, but uh, I mean, maybe by next quarter, and we should be able to pass on the increases that we have seen in this quarter, or we'll take uh, maybe a couple of quarters for that. Uh, the next quarter, yes. Okay, and sir, so, uh, the other question uh, is on the uh, cost control we talked about, and we you know sort of laid a bit more emphasis on the cost uh, control initiative. So, is it possible for you to uh, quantify maybe you know or give some ballpark numbers as to how much you know efficiencies we have achieved over the past uh, maybe few quarters? Yeah, uh, before I get to that, Arun, uh, you know, uh, while I said quarter. Uh, it will be actually the next next to next quarter because we have a you know with many we have a six monthly clause so okay. wherever it is a quarterly we will i would say some part of it will get uh, uh, compensated in in the quarter of in the q4 but some may go to q1 of 2122 it okay. makes sense okay and uh, efficiency yes uh, we have uh, you know continuously been working on that but i think one good measure of Simple measure of efficiency, what we do track is the break-even point. Uh, so the break-even point uh, has, uh, you know, definitely in terms of the sales percentage, that has reduced from what used to be, uh, let's say, 75% or to less than 70%. So that is what uh, we have, 70% of sales. So that is what we continuously focus upon, and uh, the, the, the target is to keep on reducing this. So we have, you know, the Core 90 uh, initiative, which... Uh, where we hope we'll bring it down even further to levels of let's say 65 percent okay uh, and so on the revenue front uh, i mean uh, we we talked about 20 percent year on the growth in the two-wheeler business right uh, this quarter yeah uh, but i think that two-wheeler industry per se would have grown a bit more higher i think uh, the growth was higher on a year-on-year -year basis 
Yes, you know, because one thing is the growth of Hero has been good. As you know, Hero has really done extremely well uh, in, in terms of uh, sales. And uh, unfortunately, Hero, we are not, uh, we are not a source uh, with them. Mm-hmm. That is one of the reasons uh, where there might be a little bit of a difference compared to us versus the market. But and we, all... Yeah, and also due to is it due to three wheeler uh, being uh, we being uh, a key supplier for three wheeler as well, and three wheeler market is down. Uh, yes. That's also. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I was just coming to that three wheeler, of course, is you know there are two segments which have won the brunt and which have not come back. One is the three wheelers, and one uh, second is the buses, and of course third is the railways. The three segments, mm-hmm. if you ask me. Mm-hmm. So three wheelers, you know, is really struggling, uh, but now with the schools reopening. Uh, we'll start seeing some movement from this quarter onwards. Buses, uh, with this uh, announcement of the government where they are giving some 18,000 crores, uh, and towards this you will see some movement in buses as well. Uh, so, three wheelers yes, has been a, a huge drop. I mean, the drop has been almost 60%. Okay, okay. So, that's it from my side. I'll join the queue for more questions later. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one now. The next question is from the line of Jitu Punjabi from EM Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, Manoj. Uh, no, good to see you guys uh, seeing this big turn and seeing all the upside. So congratulations and I'm glad everybody's fine. Um, a few questions from my side. One, you know, what's your sense of how long is this? Is out. And it's obviously been a spur. Uh, is your sense this is pent up demand, or you kind of think this has got longer legs to it and it continues? And also, do you kind of think that, you know, if stage one was two wheelers, stage two is cars, and stage three is probably TVs. So this could go on for a couple of years from here uh, without blinking. So, more on the demand side, market, I'd love to hear how you think about it. Yeah. Uh, so thanks, thanks, Jitu, and good to hear from you as well. Uh, yeah, on the on the sustainability of demand, I think we are uh, we are quite confident. Yes, pent up demand drove the initial, you know, let's say Q2 and Q3, uh, maybe to some extent of Q4 also will be that. But if you see the the basics, I mean, the fundamentals driving uh, the economy, uh, as I said, the rural market, uh, which is the base, is is doing very well. Uh, and uh, even in terms of future, you see the sowing is good. So I don't see anything going wrong with that. The government, in terms of its infra push, also is uh, you know uh, on good signs. So that also is certainly a positive. Uh, even if I discount the, the pent up demand factor, clearly there is uh, a move towards personal mobility. Uh, so even that would add. A, a bit, bit of you know sustainability to this demand at least for at least for one year. Maybe things may change after that. But till the vaccinations are completely you know uh, deployed and the whole country gets covered and the fear also goes away from people, uh, there will definitely be a personal mobility shift. So uh, that should help offset this initial uh, surge of pent up demand. So uh, all in all, I I don't see why next year should not replicate you know these quarters. Uh, so that's that's uh, broadly my sense. I may be I may be mistaken, but as I said, it's, and 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 in in addition, uh, you've seen the budget scrappage policy. Of course, it's early days for uh, any one of us to take a guess because the details are yet to be out. Uh, but yeah, again, take a longer term view. At least they have announced it. It's voluntary as of now. Uh, it's 20 years for uh, uh, passenger vehicles and 15 years for commercial vehicles. So uh, the direction is right. You know, certainly I don't see why uh, why the demand should go down. Uh, again, uh, and to top it all, uh, you've seen the forecast of 10% plus uh, GDP growth being projected by everybody now consistently. So, so Jito, I think uh, this demand should sustain. Okay. No, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. I was just trying to see how you're thinking. My view is that this has got at least 18 months next to it, and it's a long cycle, and that 10% real is equal to a 16% nominal GDP and a 20% dollar nominal GDP. So 
If you put that all in perspective, a 20% dollar nominal GDP means your country is doing at over 20% in dollar term, which is a big one for domestic demand. Yeah. On a on a second question, how are you thinking about what's going to be new and what's going to be different besides normalizing and trying to get this new model and trying to get Jimmy and trying to make sure you get into uh, you know besides what is normal for you guys. Is there some completely new thinking in terms of what you want to achieve, what products you want to get into, how do you think of business differently? Uh, in terms of you know, the vision that we have crafted for ourselves, which is being in the top five, that itself is, you know, uh, it's, it's a, I mean, definitely a lot of <laughs> a lot of work to do for us to get there itself. And, uh, you know, it, it really is uh, quite, uh, quite a challenge to get there. Uh, Secondly, in terms of different, uh, uh, I mean, you clearly charted out what the strategies for getting there towards the vision. Uh, you know, I, I did share the four pronged approach. Uh, so I don't see anything different, but what within the segments in India, what we are doing is we are trying to focus on the electric, you know, two wheelers where adoption is going to be really fast. It's going to be quicker than we think. Uh, so that's one focus strategy that we have taken and ensure that we are engaged with uh, definitely the two-wheeler electric makers. Uh, in passenger cars, it's still, uh, we are there on some, but uh, we are not very well entrenched in that space because even in passenger cars, the move shift will happen, but that will be a little slow. But two-wheelers, uh, certainly uh, that is something different that we are trying to do in terms of you know focusing on this, this segment, which is, uh, which is going to change the game. And one final question, if I may ask, is, uh, you know, the Volkswagen runs Russia exports. I, I remember two years ago when we were in a factory. Uh, Mr. Punjabi, audio is breaking. We are not yeah, able to hear you clearly. Yeah. Okay, is this better? Uh, so, yeah. Sorry about that. So, so you know, two years ago in your factory, we talked about, uh, in your office, we talked about uh, Volkswagen for potentially coming with from international uh, international factories orders coming in and you're seeing that happening. Can this, uh, from what you're seeing and what possibly can happen, could this be become a very uh, big part suddenly? Like, can this scale up very suddenly? Well, uh, uh, nothing happens suddenly in auto business. Uh, certainly it takes time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, just to tell you on the, you know, we, when, uh, I think when you guys visited, we had done a very small order of uh, Russia. Now that small order has uh, blown into a full-fledged uh, country. <coughs> uh, we are sending, like I said, one container every week. In fact, uh, just uh, last month we got additional 20% uh, volumes. So uh, if I just connect the dots, yes, it certainly can grow. Uh, and, and if our performance, you know, one leads to another. So if our performance has been good on this Russia, uh, which is so far touch wood, it's good. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure it will open up opportunities for us where, you know, they might ask us to, you know, can you supply in Europe or wherever with a, with a last mile assembly, whatever, and we are open to that. So, so yeah, I, all I can say is it's in the right direction. Okay, excellent, boss. Thank you. All the best. Keep going. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shashank Kanodia from ICICA Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, and uh, congratulations on the resilient performance. Yes, so my question is pertaining to, you know, given going forward, uh, we are the leaders in CV space, and CV cycle is expected to bounce back sharply over the next two to three years. So is there a possibility that we can, uh, you know, really clock 10% kind of a bitter margin in the next, say, two to three years time frame? Yes, Shashank. Uh, uh, you definitely would, would think so. Yes, why not? I mean, with all the efforts that we are looking and uh, the volumes going up, uh, we we can look at double-digit margins. EBITDA, EBITDA levels, yeah. So any specific time horizon that you're looking for or any targets internally? Uh, well, I mean, all I can say is that the three-year timeline should be a, a good bet. Okay. And so traditionally, uh, what kind of pent-up margins do we realize in the CV domain, whether it's the two-wheeler or the four-wheeler pack? Uh, Mr. as you know, we don't share the segment-wise margins. Uh, okay. But yeah, CV, 
CV is decent margin share. Right. So what we are trying to do, Shashank, initially in CV, since we are dominant in India, uh, we are trying right. to leverage that to you know take our reach global globally, and that's where DAF. Uh, we had got the Isuzu order, but the Isuzu volumes unfortunately were not uh, did not mature to be very good volumes. We continue to export to them, uh, no issues on that front at all, but their volumes are not so good. So DAF was a very important step for us. So we have just started supplies. And uh, you know, once we see some good success on this, uh, we have another two products with DAF coming up. And DAF is part of Pakar group, so that may open up doors. And uh, we definitely wish to take CV uh, globally. Right, right, right. Mr. So secondly, you know, since you mentioned as a two-wheeler part, Hero was is not a key customer. But now since TVS and Bajaj are reporting better numbers, so uh, can we really outperform the industry going forward, at least for immediate terms, next three to six months? Uh, I mean, yes, TVS is uh, really doing extremely well. What you said is right. Bajaj is doing very well, especially in the export segment. Uh, uh, Honda, where we had, uh, you know, we had... Uh, Kept on winning new orders, and we also got the front fork. Uh, you know, unfortunately, their volumes are a little little low, but I'm sure they'll do, they'll pick up too soon. Uh, and with the Yamaha, Suzuki, our story remains quite strong, uh, very well embedded. So yeah, I, I mean, uh, certainly we can we can aim for uh, going ahead of the market, which we had done last year. In fact, in 1920, we had grown better than the market. Uh, so in in two wheeler space, we can uh, certainly aim for that. Okay. Sir, lastly, you know, our other income has been quite high for last couple of quarters. So, is there any one of or is it the normal usual run rate that should continue going forward? It uh, has never been so high. Uh, Shashank, I missed, uh, missed a few words. Can you repeat? Yeah. So, the other income that we realized, which was roughly 6 crores for this quarter or 4 crores for last quarter, has never been so high on a quarterly basis. So, is there any one of or is this is the normal new run rate? Uh, Shashank, I will be here. So yes, uh, you're right that there was one out of uh, some uh, refunds being received from the tax authorities. So what would that quantum be for Q3 and Q2? So the extent of uh, 20 odd million. So sorry, I didn't get the uh, figure. 20 odd million for the quarter. 20 odd million, 2 crores. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, sorry? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sir. Lastly, sir, towards your vision of being into top 5, any inaugural acquisition that you have finalized or are progressing ahead or, you know, any color you'd like to share with us? Um, like I mentioned, yes, we we were looking at something. Then you know, unfortunately, because of COVID, things were kept on the back burner. Uh, but yes, we we are uh, we are pursuing, uh, and uh, well, not, not nothing more that I can share as of now. But yes, our pursuit is definitely on. Sure, sir. Thank you so much, and wish you all the best. Thank you, thank you, Shreya. Same to you. Also, we would request the participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. Nikhil, you can go ahead, please. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon, and congratulations on a very good uh, set of numbers. And on the great cost control which you have displayed. Uh, sir, uh, I have two questions. One is on the two-wheeler segment. Now, if we look at the two-wheeler market construct between Bajaj and Hero, the Mark, you mentioned multiple times in your calls also that market share in Bajaj can be is limited to a certain percentage. We cannot go beyond that. So, if I have to understand, uh, if we have to increase our market share in the two-wheeler segment, how do you see opportunities evolving for us? Is there, is there more room for us to gain wallet share of the players where we are not present? Uh, if you can just help me understand uh, that part. Okay. Yeah, uh, so Nikhil, certainly uh, uh, there is there is some, uh, I mean, uh, upside in terms of increasing our share of business even within existing players, uh, like TVS, TVS does used to buy from China, uh, which they are now shifted 
to uh, the source which moved. I mean, uh, in fact, it's KYB uh, Japan who set up shop in in Chennai in the Yama Vendor Park. So they buy from that. So there is there is some room which we can certainly look at increasing our share of business within TVS. Certainly, there are some models where we are uh, where we are still. Uh, I mean, presence is low uh, for, for whatever reasons. There can be some upside there. In Bajaj, yes, we have told we are we are kind of you know cap, but again, you can never. I mean, uh, I am an optimist, and uh, you know uh, you can never say how things can change. Even a few percentage points improvement can make a difference there. Uh, and then, as I said, you know we are looking at new, uh, totally new customers, which is the EV segment. So Ola, we are the single source. Okinawa, we are the source. We are there with uh, Ather, which is uh, you know you are seeing a lot of publicity on Ather currently. So we are uh, we are with them. Uh, we are with Ampere. We are with uh, several other electric uh, two wheelers and three wheelers. So so that's where the upside you know will come because naturally these these uh, EV will replace some you know some amount of uh, the normal IC engine scooters. So certainly, uh, you know, with that being being well entrenched with them, will give us that up, upside. Well, sir, another question was like recently in one of the competitors' call, we understood that Hero was looking to uh, diversify their supplier base. Uh, if you don't mind, would you share why were we participating in that business or we? Structurally, took a call that we don't want to participate because that's a big business, which could have uh, taken the scale to a larger level. So I'm just trying to understand what was the reason for not participating or anything, if you can share. No, no, I, I don't think uh, we even even uh, as late as uh, let's say a couple of weeks back, we are engaged with T Hero. So we have continuously been engaged with Hero. They had thought of you know they were going to start. Uh, the Andhra Pradesh plant, uh, as you all, uh, would know, uh, so their plans change. Otherwise, we were in really advanced discussions with them. So uh, there's absolutely no call whatsoever from our end uh, that we can't address. In fact, we are uh, obviously very keen to be part of Hero. Our uh, our pursuit continues, and even as late as last week, as I said, we are you know we are continuously pursuing with them. Okay, I have more questions. I'll come back and with you. Good. Thank you, Nikhil. Question is from the line of Aditya Makaria from HDFC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Aditya. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi, sir. Just a question. You know, uh, do we make uh, mono shock absorbers? You know, the one which I use maybe in a Bajaj Pulsar and KTM. And you know, do we supply to any customers in India? Yeah, we do. We do mono shocks. Of course, we do mono shocks. Uh, and we supply to uh, Yamaha, Suzuki. We we do we do supply mono shocks. Uh, we have the entire range. In fact, uh, the only one that we possibly didn't have was the inverted front fork, which we mm -hmm. given to TVS Racing uh, and, uh, and and Ola Electric. In fact, will be uh, an inverted front fork uh, for the first time in terms of mass supplies. So we are we are there in every uh, let's say every taxi floating piston mono shock. Uh, gas charge canister. Okay, got it, got it. Thanks, thanks so much. And and just uh, since we are on that, we are also working on an electric, I mean, uh, electronic uh, suspension for two wheelers as well. Yes, today it is an experimental stage. I mean, really cannot. Uh, we are we are long way away from uh, productionizing, but our efforts uh, continue. We keep we keep tinkering with you know how we can give better products and how to use. Uh, Technology and electronics to make uh, make the right better. So that that innovation goes on. Right. Got it. Wish you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nihar Shah from Inam Investment and Services. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, you know, I wanted to ask a question regarding the electric two-wheeler program. So, we seem to be present in, you know, all of the models that are getting launched. So, can you throw some light on what we've done different from competition, uh, you know, that we seem to have a higher market share in this segment compared to the uh, general two-wheeler business? Uh, 
it's a good question, you know, I'm sure. Uh, you know, one is we, we try, one is uh, they want the people, I mean, uh, let's say suppliers who are willing to experiment, develop, and they are looking at, you know, literally electronic speed. You know, they, they work at a speed which is really different. What we are realizing is really totally different from what is there in typical auto industry. Uh, probably because they come from an entirely different field, which is you know much more faster paced. Uh, so they need uh, development to be fast. They need prototypes very fast. They need you know reaction responses to be very quick. I think that's where we make the difference. We our own our own technology center. Uh, we are able to respond to that very well. And uh, and I think overall you know the customer approach, customer centricity that uh, as well I can share uh, at Gable, which which we have been trying to build and. that we are also seeing parallelly as to what can we do better in terms of the product also going forward which can help the electric you know EV EV makers so that is an additional initiative that we have taken for ourselves like in, in uh, like we're doing flight waiting you know at least in, in the passenger car space where uh, it's very important for a for a IC engine as well uh, to do as much light waiting as possible so we have been continuously working with them to do light waiting so we are seeing what we can do for the electric two-wheeler specifically with regard to product also in addition to our response and, uh, you know, speed. I uh, understand. And uh, are you seeing any value addition, you know, like you mentioned in uh, your time to do light waiting, are you seeing any value addition in uh, either two-wheeler segment or four-wheeler in terms of shock absorbers or front loops? Yeah, certainly. In four wheelers, uh, in terms of you are talking of value addition. Uh, to in the, terms to of higher quality of products, or you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly, we are you know using uh, higher quality materials. You know, uh, obviously, we have to look at better strength uh, and reduce the, the size. So it it naturally forces us to look at uh, you know uh, different aspects of uh, you know technology. So certainly, yet it, it adds value uh, in in. Mahindra and some of the products that we are given for our customers, we have been able to knock off almost 20 30 percent weight. Understand. And uh, the last question from my side is on the four wheeler segment. So, you know, while revenues uh, for this segment have recovered uh, substantially, you know, even compared to last year and this year, we still are substantially lower compared to the peak when we had uh, Omni as part of the business. So, is it Currently, that you know, only that Maruti volumes are lower in uh, the revenues, or also have we suffered losses in some other customers? And how would the tech center help in addressing uh, the market share, which is you know dipped in this segment? Yeah. So uh, in terms of uh, the new product pipeline, uh, as I said, uh, we 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 did lose in Maruti mainly due to the change of their product. Uh, uh, or the obsolescence of the product was nothing to do with uh, us as such. You know, uh, right. the product got discontinued. And uh, certainly we are seeing, uh, you know, our positioning within Maruti has certainly improved. Uh, we we are, uh, uh, what do you call it, in their mind space when it comes to suspension. We have won, uh, if you see, we have continuously won uh, new platforms. And all the new platforms that we have launched, let's say from, you know, Breza to Ignis to Espresso to the Carry, Suzuki Carry, now all those uh, that we launched have been flawless, you know, which is being acknowledged by even the customer. There have been no issues during launch or during, you know, post-launch as well. Uh, so that that uh, really has helped in our positioning with uh, uh, MSIL, uh, and that, that should definitely get us something going forward. And uh, uh, coming to your second question of tech center, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the tech center is just not a building, but uh, we have a building with dedicated, you know, space for uh, the technology team to try out various things. We are also adding uh, many new machines. We are also going to add going, I mean, in the next year, we'll also add a noise chamber. We'll, we'll continuously look at uh, ways and means to give a better product to the customer. So this gives them space, you know, uh, definitely gives them space. Otherwise, they were constrained, very clearly constrained uh, with regard to space. We are also having a full-fledged prototype development lab uh, facility. 
uh, within this new R&D tech center. So, you know, our prototype development capability improves, our time to market improves, our customer satisfaction will certainly go up. Uh, and, and going, I mean, eventually the, the quality is going to improve, which is so very important in our game. So, thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Momoksh Maklesha from MK Global Financial Services. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So as we have discussed, the Code 90 program has supported cost reduction. So can you share many major cost line items that have been reduced, sir? I couldn't hear your question correctly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so as you have discussed, the uh, Code 90 program has supported cost reduction. So then can you share any major cost line items that has been reduced? Core 90, I mean, was focused around, you know, actually we had taken every element of cost, you know, right, from overheads, uh, fixed and variable, to raw material, of course, being the biggest one, to, you know, in fact, productivity, uh, you know, uh, every possible aspect of cost, including, uh, let's say, uh, freight, fuel, power, uh, I mean, if, uh, consumables, uh, and we have seen a, you know, really a significant reduction in each and every every aspect that we have attacked. Uh, I mean, there has been a very, very good reduction. Uh, I, I can't say, and I, it's difficult for me to say that this one has gone down. I, I think everything that we addressed has actually improved in terms of cost levels. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, can you share an update on the localization, sir? Currently, uh, what is percent of localization and uh, what's the plan, sir? Yeah, so, uh, that, I mean, localization is a very key initiative for us. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, I, I have to share that the Q3 results could have been even better. Uh, you know, we had we had a lot of premium freight uh, because it was a really a huge, uh, deep uh, recovery. Uh, and we had to import, we like, you know, we import a lot of stuff from China. Uh, so, and the issues around COVID, issues about, around manpower availability, around ship availability, you know, uh, including the huge lines, uh, waiting lines at the port. Uh, so we had several and more challenges on, on uh, you know, supply chain. So we did incur a good amount of premium freight. So we had already embarked upon an import localization program, and uh, that continues to be a key focus area. Uh, we are investing over... Uh, over almost 20 crore rupees to enhance our casting and uh, front fork machining and powder coating facility. Uh, so we'll be lifting uh, almost uh, you know 80,000 front forks which we otherwise import uh, from China, which will be shifting uh, to in-house, completely in-house manufacturing, uh, which offers us of course the supply chain benefits, quality improvement, uh, better control, and and better cost. So. Uh, Clearly, uh, we we want to reduce uh, the imports from China to the minimum possible, uh, so that we we you know reduce this uh, uh, dependency. So, what would be number currently imports, sir? As a percent of sales? Number, you know, last year we were about uh, let's say 13, 14 percent imports. Uh, that next year, in uh, I mean. While this year uh, it would be uh, down to about 10%, and next year we're looking at uh, almost uh, reducing it to half. Okay. So, considering the strong budget outlay for railways, so what are the expectations for the railway segment going ahead? And considering this year has been a week, sir? Uh, railway has, in fact, you know, been, uh, if I may say, the worst performer in this year. Uh, uh, there's a huge drop, uh, and it doesn't seem to be improving. Yet uh, the tenders have got efforts next year. So next year, railways have told that there'll be an improvement in demand, I mean, improvement in their tenders. Uh, but I think it will take at least two years for the railways to come back to where they were. Understood, understood. And so final question, sir. Uh, what is the capex expected for FY21 and 22, sir? FY21-22, it will definitely be more uh, more than uh, what we have seen typically. You know, typically we would uh, our capex outlay has been 50 to 60 crores in that range. Uh, next year, while we are yet to yet to finalize our numbers uh, for 21-22, uh, 
but uh, all I can say is it will it will be uh, almost a three-figure, three-digit number. Thank you. We would request the current participant to please come back in the question queue for any follow-up questions, as we have several participants waiting for their turn. The next question is from the line of Viraj from Securities Investment Management. Also, we would request the participants to limit your questions to one per participant. Viraj, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I uh, have three specific questions. First is, you know, when it comes to the PV market, you know, we have always shared this ambition where we want to increase our market share more than 5%. Now, given that Teneco has a very large share with Maruti, and they also are, are they on the major export models for them, and you know Hyundai also has their own supplier, so the bulk of the market is catered by you know to other larger players. So when we say the five percent or more increase in market share uh, over next couple of years, where is this? You know, where are we looking this to accrue to us? You know, so that is one. And second is you know in the sort of premiumization. So if you look at 10 lakh and above models, you know, uh, we don't seem to be have much of a play there. So is there a technology model in more premium or higher end models? And if there is, you know, how are we looking to kind of build up our presence there? And last is on the acquisition part, you know, uh, so since the cash is now close to 100 crores, uh, you know, what are the thoughts in terms of, you know, acquisition? Would it largely be in India or will be in exports and if it's in exports will the focus primarily be on companies which has some uh, history in terms of profitability and customer access so what are the parameters we're looking when it's say we're looking to acquire thank you so in terms of pv market share uh, certainly uh, you know there's uh, as you yourself pointed out there's a definite good upside in terms of growing within maruti suzuki uh, like I mentioned, uh, we have been uh, delivering them flawless programs, program after program, uh, which has you know held us in good stead. Uh, even on the relationship, we are front, we are uh, doing very well. Even on uh, you know let's say in their uh, in their supplier uh, forum, uh, you know there have been several events where. Uh, Gabriel has, uh, has been asked to present as a benchmark to uh, to the entire forum. So all I can say is, uh, and and uh, we have some uh, some businesses in advanced stages. So I can definitely see a very good upside. Uh, like I said, in two wheelers in Bajaj, maybe that upside is you know difficult, but in Maruti there is absolutely uh, no restriction whatsoever. Uh, so I can uh, why five percent? I can increase by ten percent or twenty percent as well in Maruti. So uh, we are very uh, very hopeful about that. Uh, and in addition, uh, in terms of Hyundai, yes, uh, it is, uh, as you know, our own group company, Mando, which is supplying to them. Uh, but we do supply piston rods to Mando, uh, and we are trying to see how we can increase that supply. So at least we still remain a part of, you know, of that uh, Hyundai Kia supply chain by being tier two. That is what we have decided and uh, we are pursuing. Uh, in terms of new cars coming up, PSA, we have already won the business. So... That, that is uh, one good addition in terms of increasing market share. Tata Motors, where we were not supplying after the Safari went out of production and the Nano went out of production. Uh, we are uh, now uh, got an re-entry back uh, in, in Tata Motors. So even there, uh, we, we, we stand to add to our market share. So certainly all these put together, I don't see why we can, I mean, why we cannot go even beyond 5% uh, market share uh, improvement in, in Latin America. Yeah, it may not happen you know, tomorrow, uh, but certainly I think the foundation is not going to stay. And your second point about premium, premiumization, uh, we were in Honda, uh, we were in, uh, sorry, in uh, Toyota Corolla. Uh, unfortunately, they discontinued the model. We are working on uh, you know, the Fortuner with Toyota. It's uh, an advanced stage of discussion. Other models, let's say in Honda, the volumes are too small. Uh, we had almost won the Civic, but then again, Civic they decided uh, not to pursue. So there are some reasons where uh, why we are not there in the 10 lakh plus. And about 20 lakh segment, anyway, the customers also import the shock absorbers because the volumes are too low for them to localize. Uh, so that's about premium premiumization in passenger car. Yes, certainly your point is uh, uh, well taken that. Uh, 
can we look at something more and can we look at in, uh, improving it further? Uh, yes, certainly that's uh, that's something uh, I, I take from your point. And I, I uh, yes, we can do something more, uh, certainly. But your third point on the MNA, uh, we, uh, right now, as I said, I can only uh, tell you that we are looking actively at uh, some opportunities. Uh, I really can't comment whether, whether they are in, you know, domestic space or uh, uh, overseas. Uh, but let's say in the next in the next call, we, we may be able to update you uh, the status in, in a better fashion, hopefully. So thanks, thanks, Viraj. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Zeral Shah from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so over the years, uh, you know, we have seen that our channel mix have largely remained same. So, you know, maybe OEM contributing around 80 to 85 percent and maybe replacement and export market at around 15, 17 percent. So what is your long term guidance for the replacement market as well as export? I have seen that, you know, export uh, this this quarter have done very well. But what is your long term guidance for, you know, other two channels, which is export and aftermarket? You know, the vision that we had was, you know, have this both put together as 25%. Uh, so what you're saying rightly, it is, you know, you are like 15%. Our target was to do it 25% within aftermarket and exports. And I would say that remains uh, remains so. Uh, exports did take some time to take off, uh, but now you're seeing some early improvements. Aftermarket is, uh, like, going strongly. Uh, both domestic as well as exports. Uh, so, yeah, I think we 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 can look at improving that percentage uh, to to let's say 20 plus at least. Okay, so can we ex expect a double-digit kind of a growth in coming years in both in both these two segments? Yeah, why not? Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from SINPL. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, my only question, uh, I have one question. Um, basically, it's uh, regarding our ambition of being the global uh, play um, among the top five global player. Uh, if you have to, if if you have to understand the challenges in order to achieve this, would would you say technology is a bigger challenge or would you say it's a more of a, a time period which is required to build the relation and grow it so i'm just trying to understand that uh, how are we placed on technology if technology is a barrier to gain market share globally uh, yeah technology obviously is just yes, certainly very very important uh, maybe that's why you know as i said we have, uh, you know decided to spend on this tech center uh, along with you know, a lot of new equipment uh, new uh, uh, we'll also have uh, you know a small test track around the tech center uh, where we can do a small small and quick and dirty testing as well so tech center uh, definitely is is a very key move in that direction to improve the technology offering to the customer uh, uh, again if i break it down in terms of being the top five Break it down within segments, you know, uh, passenger. Uh, so, commercial vehicle and two wheelers, we we definitely can, you know, uh, in terms of numbers, even today we may be in the top five, you know, uh, that's very likely. Uh, in terms of passenger car, the gap is big. Uh, uh, for that, technology as well as relationships, customer accounts, you know, both of these are important. Uh, so we need to work on both. So passenger car, there's a big gap. But uh, the other two segments, uh, certainly, we, we I would say we are already in the top five. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, in order to uh, fill this gap in PV, would you say that uh, probably because, uh, as I understand, like filling this gap in PV and coming to top five in PV might be a more uh, time-drawn process. So yes. would you say that, that might be uh, uh, substituted by a better growth in exports because our export share as compared to the global market is still very small. So how do you see that market share increasing? Because you've mentioned in previous calls that with DAF and with VW, Russia, and there there was this Colombia product. 
once these start happening uh, the export growth could be significantly higher so how are you seeing the uh, the product scale up or the new rfqs coming up for you so they are they are moving well as i said they, you know, they have been uh, moving quite well but uh, in terms of passenger car yes we have, we have got this volkswagen order uh, but i think if we if we uh, have that global ambition which we have we certainly have to look at improving technology and getting a good customer account uh, exports uh, yes exports is is the way uh, no question about it export is the way to get there okay uh, thanks a lot thank you the next question is from the line of shashank kanodia from icici securities please go ahead yes so in the opening remarks you mentioned about uh, being an advice for ola electric so are we going to be the sole suppliers for that or how, how is the business going to be yeah i mean that is the understanding that we have we are the sole suppliers okay in second phase you mentioned about a big three digit capex next year so that will amount to exactly what can you uh, share some color on that i mean what i mean is big three digit i mean we might just uh, you know move into a three digit number uh, normally we are at 50 60 next year it will be more like 90 to 100 you know uh, because I, as i mentioned 20 crore we are putting up in backward integration uh, we are putting up this facility a furnace and uh, um, i mean a machining setup uh, for uh, machining and processing our front fork which we import from china so that is one part the other uh, investments i mean in terms of directionally uh it's mainly uh, automation we are focusing a lot on automation uh, we have as you know we have already have uh, almost 30 plus robots in all our plants put together uh, we are doing automation so that you know the finally the productivity and the people cost uh, keeps coming down over the years so that is the second direction uh, and the third direction is technology so import substitution uh, uh, automation and technology these would be the three broad, broad directions where we are you know going to invest uh, going forward thank you the next question is from the line of viraj from securities investment management please go ahead yeah most of my questions have been answered i just had one follow up on acquisition the focus would largely be on existing product category right yes yes and you know the point you said on the technology gap uh, being there in pv so would that be one of the sole driver when we kind of looking to bid and go for an acquisition abroad it is one of the drivers yeah okay thank you thank you due to time constraints that was the last question i would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments thank you uh, thank you all for uh, really very interesting questions and uh, some uh, you know some of which we definitely have to work upon and uh, gives us some you know some food for thought and also how to improve our own performance going forward so thanks once again sincerely for that uh, hope for you were able to answer most of the questions like i said we we are looking at really strong recovery uh, I, things could could have been even better uh, you know if we had forecasted this recovery but i mean uh, none of us could uh, it's not only let's say gabriel in fact the industry could not forecast this kind of a uh, really uh, almost a miraculous recovery that happened uh, starting from september actually uh, and uh, like we said uh, we see this sustaining uh, going forward definitely in the next year or even even longer as long as you know the government is uh, stable which it is and it has it continues on its you know growth oriented policies so uh, we we don't see any uh, big impediment to this uh, yeah we just hope and pray that there is no second wave or resurgence of any mutated variant or something uh, that is the only if that we have as of now uh, otherwise uh, you know it's, it it looks good and uh, uh, we we hope to make the most of it going uh, forward so thank you once again and wish you all a very very happy healthy and safe uh, new year uh, we are already in the second month but nevertheless uh, you know i really hope that we move to a much better year and we try to create uh, the memory of 2020 all together uh, so thank you once again thanks for your support and thanks for your patience